Welcome to the Sclerometry course. We are talking about a non-destructive test or procedure to determine elastic hardness or the rebound index in hardened concrete through the use of a sclerometer or rebound hammer. The rebound hammer consists of a steel bar, plunger, which receives the impact of a steel piece driven by a spring. This impact is transmitted to the concrete surface, and due to its resistance, the piece rebounds and its maximum displacement is recorded on a linear scale fixed to the body of the instrument. We select the areas for the test, through impact with a personal hammer, to sensitively and auditorily verify the change in hardness in the concrete of the structure. Before the test, any element not typical of the concrete that could affect the rebound index must be removed from the surface. The surface must be polished with the abrasive stone until it is smooth. On this surface, 5 to 12 impacts should be made with a sclerometer. With chalk, we make 5 to 12 grids of at least 25 millimeters on the polished areas. In the center of each grid, we make the impacts with the sclerometer. According to ASDM C805, it is required that the concrete piece selected for the test must have a thickness greater than 100 mm, with a smooth and dry surface, with the sclerometer in a perpendicular position to the test surface and distancing the test points a minimum. 25 mm The sclerometer is placed perpendicular to the surface of the concrete to be tested and a small pressure is applied to allow the plunger to be released and allowed to extend to its maximum extension, eliminating pressure on the hammer, maintaining perpendicularity, and that the pressure is uniform until the internal mass of the hammer hits the concrete surface. After the impact, the push button is pressed and the reading is taken in the graduated scale window, recording the rebound index, measured from 10 to 100 with two significant figures. If you like this video, stop for a moment. Help me with a like. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video. And if you want to make a donation, to help and continue with the theme of the channel, you can do it by pypalangelmaradaroba.gmail.com. Once the tests are done, we empty it into a table indicating the values of each set. In our case, a total of 8 sets were performed, with 12 rebound trials per set. In a second table, we place the results, where we specify the name of the area, the element, type of element, aggregate, surface characteristics, information from the sclerometer, and the orientation of the hammer in each test. With the bounce information, the average value is sought. With this average value, depending on the orientation of the hammer when it is perpendicular to the surface, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, or minus 90 degrees, we look in the graphs, or preferably in the table that gives the reading values for each rebound. In our case, the average value of 34 units and an angle of 0 degrees gives me the value for the elastic hardness of the concrete of 260 kg per square centimeter. Now according to ASDM C805, the values obtained in the test, all readings that differ by more than 6 units from the mean must be discarded. If there are more than 2 reads that meet this condition, the set should be discarded. Therefore, these values, which differ by more than 6 units from the mean, are discarded. If there are 3 or more of these values in the set, the set will be discarded. The PTO5 assembly was discarded, because more than 2 tests caused the surface to sink or deform, taking the shape of the blunt tip of the hammer. 
When this happens, up to one millimeter of the surface could be removed by mechanical means to perform a new test. Finally, the average of the elastic hardness values of the concrete is taken, and it gives us 213 kilograms per square centimeter. If you like this video, stop for a moment. Help me with a like. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video. And if you want to make a donation, to help and continue with the theme of the channel, you can do it by paypal angelmaradaroba gmail.com.